my guide was eaten by a lion. I used to work about 70 kilometers that way uh, about 10 years ago or so in a private concession within the Kruger National Park. Now, when we got to that area, it was very, very, very new open up. A lot of the animals were quite skittish and, and, and used to run away from the vehicle. So we used to track on foot a lot. And we had an incredible pride that Natio actually made a documentary on called the Mega Pride. We used to call them the Mountain Pride. At one stage, they got to over 40 lions. And they used to live on the basalt plains leading up to the Lobombo Mountains. And one of the most amazing trackers I've ever worked with in my life, a man by the name of Glass Marmani and myself found tracks of this pride. And what happens normally when you're on a safari with, with guests is that I have my rifle and there'll obviously be a tracker seat up front. And we'll say to the guests, we're just going to leave you here in the shade for a little bit. Uh, Glass and I are going to go for a quick walk. Uh, as a guide, you're not normally ever gone for longer than 20 minutes. If you think the tracking is going to take longer, you leave the rifle with your tracker and you walk back to the vehicle and you drive around. You talk to him on the radio, find out where to meet him. So we were on a ridge like this and the road's there. We stopped under a nice tree so the guests didn't get sunburned. And we walked down into a little river system. And on the other side of the river system is a, a series of uh, what we call sodic sites, so thick quarry bushes and open patches. And the tracks went down into the river and popped out into these thick quarries, so we're going quite slowly. And then as we sort of popped out of the thickets and about 70 meters away, uh, there was the mountain pride. But this time they had two males with them that had come that we didn't see very often they'd come from north of our concession. And there's a very simple rule about lions. A noisy lion charging you is a safe lion, a quiet lion is a dangerous lion. And these two male lions got up and came silently. Glass my tracker starts shouting, do what I want, do what I want, shoot them, shoot them. And I was like, ah, ah, throw rocks at them. And uh, our language took a real big dive. We used some choice words at the, at the lions, but it, uh, they stopped at about, I think about just under six feet from us. I mean, we got dust and everything spraying up onto us. And uh, hello, impalas. And we were, we, were, we, were, we, were, we were not feeling quite confident when you've got lions literally right next to you. And you have a system when you work with a tracker, especially in the area there where we used to get charged by lions and stuff a lot where they're not used to people uh, or vehicles, is that when you're on foot and you've got your rifle up now, your tracker slips his finger through your belt and he leads you out so you can keep focused on whatever the danger is. And uh, while well, we threw glass through some rocks at the lions, I was shouting at the lions and using some bad language at their, in their general direction. But it took us about 25 minutes to get out of there because every time we took a step back, they'd come forward again, charging, growling. Now the guests, although they couldn't see us, were probably no more than 100 meters. So all they could hear was all this shouting. And now once the lions had stopped their charge, all this growling. And uh, like we have our, our earpieces here, we had earpieces there. and. Um, we had an American lady on the vehicle, and she uh, could just hear lions growling and us shouting, but grabbed the radio, but couldn't figure out that there was an earpiece into it, so she couldn't hear what we were saying back. So she grabbed the game drive radio and, and, and shouted, my God, my God, my guest, my, my guy's been eaten by a lion, my guy's been eaten by a lion. Obviously, that caused major panic through the rest of the guiding team. Everyone starts rushing up to the north, and... Uh, Eventually, Glass and I managed to get out of that situation and, and, and we were completely fine until we got back to the car. And I, I, I remember I opened the rifle, took the round out, made the, the firearm safe, closed it, put it in its case, and then my hands just went and I couldn't even speak. It was just shaking. And uh, my tracker, Glass, couldn't even get into the car. He was just missing the step the whole time. And, and then... Uh, there was, there was also a British couple on the vehicle 
and she piped out from like, Brent, Brent, my dear, I really didn't enjoy the language you were using from there. And I, I didn't, at that moment, I didn't realize she was joking. She was joking. <laughs> but here we are. That was a 